just before this video begins I do have to leave a warning for these topics here as I do mention them with some of the books that I have read and some of the anime that I have seen for these last two months. If you want to leave the video here, completely fine, enjoy your day and I hope to see you next time. <music> cosplay of Nagato Yuki but I couldn't decide if I wanted to do Haruhi Suzumiya Nagato Yuki or the disappearance of Nagato Yuki. So I've got this amalgamation of both and no I did not have enough materials to make the big hat so I have this one that does not fit on my head. Hello everybody, my name is Yuki Nagato and welcome to the Dramatic Otaku. Today we'll be talking about the monthly review of anime and manga that the owner of this channel, Brooklyn, has read over the last two months. And it will be over the last two months. This is not a monthly kind of deal. Uh, it is a bi-monthly type of video. This video will also be sectioned into two parts, the anime only section and the manga only section. There should be chapters in the What's this thing called? Progress bar down below if you want to just listen to the anime part or just listen to the manga. Just before the video begins, I will not be talking about Attack on Titan in this video, mainly because as of recording this video uh, and as of the end of March, Attack on Titan hasn't actually finished. They postponed the last episode about a week. And of course, there's the fact that no one knows what's going to happen after the end of the final episode uh so i'm gonna make gonna be making a whole whole new video just on attack on titan and the speculation of what's gonna happen after the final episode once the final episode has come out so attack on titan is not gonna be in this video especially since it hasn't technically finished in march so it doesn't go into my February, March favourites, though throughout the most of March I have been watching Attack on Titan. We are starting with manga first, and we'll be going by month, starting with February. So, beginning with manga, we're going to be starting with what I read in February. Now, February is not very content heavy for me in terms of watching anime and reading manga. As I said, I've been watching uh, Attack on Titan for the last two months. Uh, however, in terms of watching other anime, I wasn't really invested because I was starting school and I was trying to learn Japanese and all of this and this and this. So when it comes to manga that I read, or I should say graphic novels that I read, because the first couple books that I read in the start of February was the rest of the Heartstopper series. Now this is technically a graphic novel and not manga. As you can see, the first volume is nowhere in my manga shells, so I don't really put it with my manga stuff, but it is still a graphic novel and I still want to talk about this series because I actually really enjoy it. Now, there is a fifth volume coming out for this series. I don't think it's coming out for a year and there is a Netflix series coming out around Heartstopper. I'm going to watch that series because genuinely, I adore this little series <laughs> of books. But yes, I absolutely adore the Heartstopper series. I do have some opinions about it. Uh, volume 4 specifically, shit hits the fan really quickly in terms of uh, main character Charlie's mental health. And this is not... It is and it is not a series that I would recommend. It is a series if you really want to read a queer love story. I really love this because I myself am bi bisexual. I can see a lot of myself in Nick. Um, and I really like this series because of the amount of representation it has. Uh, it has like a predominantly queer main cast with a few like straight members. Uh, they have like trans representation, bisexual representation, gay representation, lesbian representation, um, and it does the story 
also does talk a lot about mental health. Now, personally, if it was just a if if this was just a cute queer romance story and just that, it should have stopped at volume 3. Volume 4 had an unexpected change for me. And that was the spoilers a uh, mental decline, very sharp mental decline of Charlie. Now, most of volume four is spoken from Nick's perspective as he is partially struggling with the fact that his partner, Charlie, uh, has to go to a mental hospital because he has had such a sharp decline in his mental health. Uh, this series specifically talks a lot about bullying, talks a lot about uh, eating disorders, especially in this last volume here. Uh, it talks about depression, anxiety, the whole sort of mental health shebang. Uh, it is really good to talk about these things, especially in queer love stories. and. That is what I like about this series. However, the topics brought up in this story is potentially very triggering. And I know this because there were certain topics that were very triggering to my anxiety. It is just a lot. It is very good to talk about these things in these kinds of books and especially in queer love stories. However, for those who are recovering or who get significantly triggered by certain events i would not suggest this book just for your mental health or if i did suggest this book i would suggest you stop at volume one it is cute enough in volume one there is a bit of a cliffhanger which makes you want to read into volume two but volume two is where sort of the triggering content starts as there is conversations about cutting so very good series i love it uh, if it's just for the romance element, I really wish it had stopped at uh, volume 3, but I can understand that the author's intentions in trying to talk about mental health in a queer love story and how ac that's actually really good, but going into this whole series, I genuinely thought it was just going to be a queer love story and it's gone beyond that, so... It's both good and bad in that factor. Um, am I going to pick up volume five? I don't think so. Um, personally, because there was a point in volume four as well where I think this series could have ended. Which part was it? Yeah, the ending, literally the ending of volume four, I thought was a perfect ending to the series. It didn't really need to be expanded on. Obviously, there were things that were like uh, stuff that need to be tweaked, but I don't think I'm gonna pick up after volume five. I think volume four ends just fine. Um, if I do get my hands on volume five, maybe I'll continue to read this series, but I don't know, only time can tell. Currently, my eyes are sort of going towards a different uh, queer graphic novel love series. Uh, that I really really want to read but I cannot currently afford because I'm doing at the very most $30 per manga shop that when I go into the city and shop for manga I am like lim limiting it to only $30 and these I believe are exactly 30 or they're, tw or they're like 45 or something like that I don't remember <laughs> but the one that I want to read is 45, so I won't be able to read that for a while, especially with some of the manga that I do want to read. Now, this is a manga and anime video. It is predominantly about manga and anime. That is predominantly what I am about. So let's move into the anime portion of this video. Sorry, the manga portion of this video. So we've got Kiki Summer Volume 21. I really do not need to sing the praises of Kiki Summer. I really like this volume as Volume 21 is essentially the start of the final arc, final big main arc of Kiki Summer Lovers War, 
with the main protagonists, Kaguya and Shiragane, going into third year. Uh, this is said at the like very last page of the manga. The final stage begins, I believe. Yeah, it says, and now the story enters the final stage with the uh, in entrance of a new character, which it feels a bit late to be bringing in a new character, but I guess that's what they wanted to do. This volume specifically finishes up the story of the last third years. Uh, it finishes uh, Ishigami's romance, romance with Subame. Spoilers! Subame rejects Ishigami and there is a pretty funny chapter where Ishigami is just all over the place because of it. I really like uh, this volume. It is a bit lackluster compared to uh, volumes past, but it's the end of a big character arc and the start of a new character arc. I think the last main arc of the series that will conclude the series is going to have Miko confess to Ishigami with Shiragane having to fight this other guy that's appeared at the end. I really don't know why they brought in a new character this late into the manga to be quite honest. I'll get volume 22. I am particularly just reading this volume by volume that comes out. Uh, I may, not gonna lie, start trying to read uh, from this point onwards online instead of via the manga just because it feels too uh, it feels too long between volumes releasing for me to actively want to wait that long so i may start reading this online uh and from there just collect the rest of the volumes <laughs> so yeah um and speaking of collecting as you guys may or may not know i am a avid fan of janji Ito, and i talked about this book avidly over the last several months over the last several videos that being deserter now, as I've mentioned in earlier videos, Deserter is a, another of the Junji Ito short story collection by Viz Media. It has some of Junji Ito's best works. This one apparently has some of his earlier works in it. Um, and I fucking love this. I don't like it as much as, say, Shiver Smashed Frankenstein, but I like this a lot more than, say, Love Sickness or Sensor. Now, as I said, this was supposed to come out either before Love Sickness or before Sensor, and there is like a lot in here that stands out compared to those two. Sensor obviously is a long form story, so it is different to this, but when it comes to Love Sickness, I much prefer this one, mainly because there is a lot of variety in this book and Love Sickness felt like it could be a censor of sorts. Like if Love Sickness came out as its own story, I probably would have been fine with it, but since it came out as being part of the short story collection, it felt a little lackluster. This, while not as good as say Shiver or Smashed, that probably being because those are like Junji Ito's greatest stories um, or most well renowned. Um, this one is really, really good. So a few standout stories. Now, before I mention anything, two stories that are in here I'd already read online. One of them being Bullied, which I, I fucking love and hate that story so, 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 so much. So it is creepy it is more so unsettling especially the last like panel as is with most denji ito stories yeah it's 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 insane <laughs> bullied feels more like domestic horror than with more of his other works with some sort of like mental instability in the uh mother character uh but yeah i love bullied from this story another story that i had actually read beforehand was scripted love scripted love isn't as powerful as bullied uh they've put more of the powerful stories towards the end but um scripted love is still a bit sinister in a way like uh this girl is head over heels for this guy that she likes who's an actor uh she finds a tape of him acting out lines, uh, I think for her or something like that. And she communicates to that version of him to the point where uh, something happens to him where she can save him from dying 
and she chooses not to and falls in love with the version of him on the TV instead. So it is very sinister that story and I really really like it but out of all the stories in this book three in particular stood out to me. Uh, four if you include Bullied. That being uh, Where the Sandman Lives which wow <laughs> that mm. That one freaked me out. The Village of the Siren, which is a bit of a trip, personally. I kind of would have liked to see uh, Village of the Siren expanded, but I guess the Village of the Siren expanded would kind of be Uzumaki, in a way. They kind of have similar vibes. I didn't like it as much as the rest of the story, but it is a bit of a trip. That's why I sort of ranked it higher up. Um, and the last one that I really really liked obviously is the namesake of this story, Deserter. The twist is very cliche but worked in such a really good way. Like it is it is the most cliche trope. Spoilers with Deserter, this family has kept their old family friend who was a deserter of war in their shed for upwards of eight years and they are essentially torturing him because he is the direct cause of their one of the older sisters dying because she got shot by an American plane or something like that during like the Second World War. Come to find out when they go up to the room where the deserter is because they think he's been alive the entire time and having dinner with them and like they're just fed up with him despite being like oh we're so happy you can't believe that this is happening uh we're still in a war they're completely lying to him they go up to his uh little room that he runs in and out of and it turns out he's been dead the whole time and the just the last panel really sold this for me it is very cliche he's been dead the whole time you were like torturing a ghost um but it really freaks out the family and it is genuinely a really good ending for how cliche it is but yeah so that is my february manga and graphic novel review let's go into march so when it came to march uh i sort of had two phases um, so I had one half the month where I was very, very stressed uh, out because I was about to dye my hair and it cost a stupid amount of money to the point where I cannot afford to buy manga for the next couple of months, especially because I want to buy editing software. So I will not have money nor be able to purchase manga for the next couple of months. That's why I'm doing these videos bi-monthly. The first half of this month was when I was not spending money and was just reading manga that I hadn't read in my library previously. So to start off is Idle Dreams. Now, I actually really fucking like this book. Like, this is a really compelling story. So this is the main character here. I cannot remember her name. Chikage uh, is the name of this woman here. Uh, she's 31 and she in her teens uh, at the end of junior high used to be the like not the princess of the school. She was very much admired for her looks and everyone and she was super popular. Everyone loved her and she's 31 going to her uh, junior high school reunion and she is the plainest one there she's 31 she's a virgin she doesn't drink um she's really plain and she just doesn't have the best time she recognizes uh one of her classmates talks to him um and everything goes downhill for her till from there it gets to the point where she's like i don't want to be like this anymore i want to start over and she goes to a uh, drown herself when the classmate that she talked to happens to catch her long story short this this classmate is a pharmacist and uh their business was uh working on a age reducing drug or something like that and he offers it he, he offers it offers it to chikage which she takes which reverts her back to a 15 year old in body this only happens in like eight hour intervals and first thing that happens when she's reverted back to being 15 is she gets scouted by a modeling agency. Yep, so 
she continuously goes back to being this 15 year old continues to take the drug uh, she still lives her 31 year old self when she reverts back in body goes to work like normal but will also do this modeling and idol work and uh this idol who's very very popular who is also 15 uh, who's actually 15 <laughs> becomes her like teacher teaches her how to be an idol and do all this and he is also her first kiss and looks like her crush from when she was actually 15. Now, as bad as I've made that out to be, because that's the vibe I was originally getting, this does get better in volume one, in volume one, which you love to see. It's no fucking Water Dragon's Bride where you have to wait till vol volume two to understand what's happening with the story. From the vibe that I'm getting from this book, it seems that the 15 year old idol is gonna fall in love with Chikage, yet Chikage, Chikage is gonna fall in love with her um, her childhood friend uh, that she met at the thing. I don't think there's gonna be any romantic tension between the idol and Chikage whatsoever. And it's really nice to feel that coming from the book. There is no vibes whatsoever that Chikage is even interested in, uh, interested in the idol. She just admires him because he looks like the, or she just initially admires him because he looks like her former crush, but she's able to be like, well, he's not, He's 15, but he's a very admirable kid. That's why I really like this series and I'm intrigued to like, see how this progresses in the future. Um, I really wanna get the next couple of volumes of Idle Dreams. It seems genuinely like a really good series. Um, and yeah, it is super weird. Don't get me wrong, it is super weird, but I like how they've taken the approach of Chikage. Next is Sakura Hime. I'm not all that interested in this book. Now, it very much has the early 2000s art style, like 2008 kind of art style late 90s early 2000s big eyes very intricate looking eyes um lots of lines in the hair kind of art style this takes place in i don't know what period heian era that's when this takes place personally i'm not the biggest fan of this book it has this whole like setup where like sakura hime is like not happy to be married but then she finds out the emperor who she's going to marry is like really nice and they're really nice together and she starts to fall in love but it turns out backstab he wants to kill her because she is a descendant of princess kaguya the legendary princess of um the moon if she dies his family will stop a curse that's occurring very action heavy in the first volume alone and i'm not a huge fan of that uh personally um it's got low-key sailor moon vibes but it's just not my style really i'm not gonna pick this up it is very pretty but i'm not as invested in this as i was invested in this now next is another three-parter i what i read uh the First three volumes of Given. I do want to continue this series. Uh, I, if you do not know what Given is, is it is a BL series about uh, these two characters here. They um, are in a band together, um, and it is quite dramatic. It is very slice of lifey, but. Um, yeah, I do like this series. I want to continue reading it. Really difficult to get into. <laughs> the first couple of like chapters were really boring, but the more I got into it, I was more interested. Yeah, there's not a lot to say about Given because Given is a super popular like story. So going into this second half of March, this is all new manga that I bought, uh, mainly because this is post me dyeing my hair um 
but also because I sort of needed to ne read new manga at this point. I was not having good mental health times during this latter half, half of the month and reading manga has actually been really helpful for me. So I bought new manga and we're just gonna start off with Love Me, Love Me Not, volume 11. This is where the story should have fucking ended. So both couples are now together in the story. So Love Me, Love Me Not as a series is very cute. It is not as good as this author's previous works, such as Our Heart and Ride. Our Heart and Ride is far superior than this book. This series is really good. The, cons the main consensus that like I felt and my friends who have read this story have felt is that by volume six, there is a lull, like there's a really big lull in the story. And even with the adapted movie, there is a movie, Love Me, Love Me Not, that I have yet to watch, but have wanted to watch. Um, it doesn't look as nice as the manga, but I still want to watch it. And I've gotten this consensus across the board that as of volume six, when the first couple, that being Rio and Yuna, get together. That for most people is where the story should end because it's really exciting up until that point. There is a huge lull in the series after that point um, and that's when the sort of arc of where Akari and Kazu uh, are having their arc of getting together and there's a lot of like miscommunication. Uh, there's a bit about like Akari's uh, Akari and Ryo's parents possibly getting a divorce and that meaning well will Akari have to move away will Ryo stay who knows there's a lot of that in the latter half of the series and yeah across the board friends that I've talked with who are into the series have said after like after Ryo and Yuna got together it's very boring the movie is apparently very very similar where after Rio and Yuna get together, there is a huge lull because they're trying to wrap up Akari and Kazu's love story. And in volume 11, Akari and Kazu get together. This should be the volume where it fucking ends. There is a to be continued because there's the threat that Akari and Rio have to move. They, they fully in this volume alone solve Akari and Ryo's parents uh, dispute with each other so they're not getting a divorce. Akari and Kazu get together so happy ending for all. Oh except because Akari's father is uh, working they may have to move and thus there is another fucking volume coming out and I'm not even Stressing this because this says to be continued. The fucking series should have ended with this book. This would have been just a satisfying ending. But no, they have to continue this series. Why? Why does the series have to continue? This is a fine enough ending. This is my problem with Heartstopper, like, amplified. Like, I was just a little off with how, uh... Heartstopper is continuing when, when I think it should have ended. Whereas with this, like, well with Heartstopper, I can see why it, can, why it is continually going. They're talking more about mental health and queer relationships. This should have just point blank stopped. Will I get volume 12? Probably. I'm in it, I'm just gonna collect the full series, but I'm not happy that this didn't end in this volume. If they're trying to get it to 13 volumes, like with Our Haru Ride, okay. But like, maybe you should have pushed out Rio and Yuna's love story just a smidgen more then, because everything, everything wraps up in this manga. <laughs> Why do we need more volumes? Why do we need another plot? That is my census on Love Me, Enough, Love Me Not volume 11 it should have ended at volume 11 that is it so my love mix up volume one so i decided to get this based on 
uh, I got two recommendations for this one book. Um, one from my friend and the other from a YouTube video. I really have wanted to get into more queer love stories um, and this one is actually pretty good. So my love mix up is between these two characters specifically. This is our main character here. This story is basically a huge misunderstanding um, where this character here is in love with this character here. Um, and during a test, she lends him a eraser that has a name on it. Now, he thinks the name on it is his name. Later, we find out that she has actually had a different name on the eraser, but because she's been using the eraser, the first letter was rubbed out. To put it this way, uh, she lends him the eraser, he lends him the eraser, he thinks he's in love with him, when in actuality, he's in love with her. He thinks she's in love with him and that they would be a really good couple. He's open to the idea of falling in love with him. And over the course of him trying to get her to fall in love with him, he starts to fall in love with him. And by the end of the volume, we find out that, uh, spoilers, uh, she is not actually in love with him, whereas he is. We don't get to say what his emotions are for this book, but she is actually in love with his friend who has a very similar name. <laughs> so this is, this is a very cute, very funny love story and I really really want to continue this. It is really good. It is a it is such an adorable story and yeah it's not BL in the traditional sense like this is by sh this has got the shoujo beat tag it's not by uh, sublime and it doesn't have a BL tag on it. It's just genuinely a really really cute little story. Highly recommend this. Um, I'd say this, out of all of the manga that I've got today, I would recommend this out of all of them. <laughs> uh, the recommendations I got for this series, spot on. I love this this little book and I can't wait to continue the rest of this, this series in particular. Yakuza Love Volume 3. It's still spicy. This, this, this book is just my, like, guilty pleasure book really. That's what Yakuza Lover is for me. Not a lot to say. I was just watching my January view review for Yakuza Lover to like understand what I think about this book. Volume 1 of Udise Yatsura. Yes, I found where I can get this book. <laughs> um, and I genuinely really like this book. It is difficult to start on. Like the first, uh, first couple of chapters are really difficult to read. It's a very, very repetitive series. This ha but this is only the first volume. It's a series by Rumiko Takahashi, who made the uh, Inuyasha franchise, as well as uh, Mermaid Saga. Uh, Udise Yatsura is getting a anime revival as of this year. That's why I really wanted to start the manga for Udise Yatsura. Um, I'm no matter what, I'm going to watch the anime. I'm not going to wait till I've got the full series of Udise Yatsura to watch the anime. I'm going to watch the anime regardless, but I thought it'd be just a good idea to actually start Udise Yatsura. You may see a lot more of this in my next few reviews for the next couple of months as this costs like $28, which is cheap compared to the likes of fucking Inuyasha, which is like $40 for something the same fucking size. Then again, this is in less demand and also was like from the 70s. So it's a slightly less well known, despite it being one of Rumiko Takahashi's biggest works. <laughs> this is the story that essentially launched Rumiko Takahashi into stardom as a mangaka. So yeah, I really like this series, especially towards the end of the book as the stories begin to get more convoluted. It is essentially a lot of like little short stories threaded together by one plotline. So Ataru Moroboshi is extremely, extremely unlucky. He was born on an unlucky day under an unlucky star and just has the worst luck humanly possible. And on a specific day, he is chosen to be a representative of Earth in a uh, battle of tag because if he 
loses, the earth will belong to the ogre race uh, of whatever planet the ogres are from. Lum is an ogre and he has to go up against Lum. Uh, this battle of tag goes for several days and on the just before the last day of tag, uh, Moroboshi's girlfriend says, if you win, I will marry you. Moroboshi is then super excited because he's like, yes, I'm gonna marry my girlfriend. My girlfriend's gonna stay by me forever, despite the fact that he is an insane womanizer. But um, he goes through that entire day shouting marriage because that is all on his mind. At the end, when he does actually catch Lum, shouts once again, I'm getting married or marriage. Lum mistakes this for a proposal because Moroboshi's luck is just that shit. From the hijinks ensues, Lum is head over heels for Moroboshi. She very frequently attacks him because he is flirting with his girlfriend and then both of them attack him because he's flirting with other women and other space princesses and etc. This story at the start is very repetitive again so it's very difficult to read at the start but as it progresses it's a lot more fun the stories are longer there is a lot of the same themes of Moroboshi's unlucky something happens he ends up being wildly hurt by either Lum his girlfriend or some other outside forces people widely know Moroboshi as the savior of earth but also the really unlucky kid so shit keeps happening because of him that is Udaseyatsura or at least the first volume in a nutshell I really like this series and can't wait for the anime and cannot wait uh, to get my hands on more volumes so yeah I forgot what Ah, oh, fuck, I forgot one. The last <laughs> manga that I have for today uh, for March, and I forgot this because I actually just got this today. This was supposed to come two or three months ago with Revolutionary Girl Utena and all of those volumes of manga, but this is Thai Hai Reira Hanamaru Academy. So this is something that I found on TikTok and it was basically sold as men in skirts. <laughs> But uh, this series, first of all, the cover is fucking gorgeous. Like, this is a stupidly gorgeous manga for like the contents of it. The main characters aren't these two, as you may think. It is this one up here and occasionally this character here. These two characters remind me of uh, Hinata from Haikyuu and Ida from My Hero Academia. Um, but this story is essentially about uh, this story is essentially about this character here and how they try to maneuver through school, trying to understand the popularity of certain clothing. How they, as the uh, class representative, are so unpopular. Uh, this is a story about an all boys school, uh, about a bunch of boys who wear skirts to school and wear more feminine clothing they wear like bras and panties it's essentially the cliches of teenage girls in anime but applied to teenage boys uh these two are bait <laughs> for people who like what's it called want to pick up the book it's barely about these two here um this is a really funny series i'm gonna pick up volume two of this because first of all as i said manga fucking gorgeous this the art style is so pretty and so is like the cover this has to be one of the prettier manga covers especially the back that i've ever picked up <laughs> and it's really weird seeing the contents of the manga saying that this is like the prettiest cover of a manga that i have but yeah i got it today and smashed through it it's really really good and actually quite funny but yes, so I'm going to be continuing Thigh High. It's really weird. I would kind of re uh, recommend it only a little bit. It it's kind of weird and yeah, it, it, it is basically applying the struggles of a slice of life teen girl uh, in anime to teen boys wearing skirts. So yeah, I really like uh, Thigh High and maybe you will too. So yes, I am currently reading this. You guys won't see like the full story of that until next time that I do a video like this. But yes, so that has been my manga portion of this video. Obviously this is really long, 
but trust me, the next section is actually gonna be quite short. So let's move into my February anime. Okay, so I'm going to uh, insert the clip from my updated 2022 anime video of me talking about Demon Slayer season two, because that's all I watched in February other than like Attack on Titan. Holy shit! So I have watched the second season to its fullest, like I said in the last video. I binged it after the full series had been released and I absolutely adore the second season. Demon Slayer is one of those series where it goes almost exactly by the book and then adds more to it and adds more in a good way. It adds on to backstories of certain characters. For example, the start of season two, the Rengoku first episode, I don't think, from memory, it appears in the manga whatsoever, so that was a really nice addition to the series. There are also some very small scenes in the Red Light District arc that they added upon that I fucking loved. Okay, a little bit of a lie, I did also watch for the first time The Tale of Princess Kaguya um, from Studio Ghibli. It's a really beautiful movie. Is it my favourite Studio Ghibli movie? No. The visuals are absolutely gorgeous i love it the movie did make me cry at the end um but yeah i really like this movie maybe you guys will like it too but we're gonna move straight into march now march is very different i watched three uh full series not including again attack on titan for this uh full section now when i say i watched three full series i mean I started one of these series in January when it was released and I'm talking about it now, now that it has been finished. Uh, I started with the Netflix series Kotoro Lives Alone. It is an interesting series. It is very funny. I love the series. It is... I laughed quite a bit at this series, especially in the beginning. Um, it is about this young boy who is probably no older than five. Kotoro, uh, and as the title states, he lives alone. And the story goes through hijinks uh, of him living alone, trying to be an adult, despite being only four or five years old. Now, this series uh, does talk about abusive parents. It talks about a child having been put in, in a uh, foster home or a care home. Um, because his mother has passed away and his father is abusive to the point where he has a restraining order where he cannot see his son. It is that bad in the series. It gets very heavy towards the end of the series, but it makes the story that much more interesting and compelling. Um, I binged this series in three days and as much as there are lighthearted portions, there are also very depressing portions and semi-triggering portions in this anime um yeah i would partially recommend it partially not sleepy princess in the demon castle so this was another recommendation from tiktok um i fucking love this series it is a comedy series i binged it in a day because i was doing assignment work so i just needed to do it um again this was around the time where i was having a really tough time mentally and this anime made me feel so much better because it is so fucking funny i love it there is as with all sort of slice of life comedy anime that has got a fantasy twist on it uh there is a bit of a lull towards the end of the series I really wish they'd ended the series a little differently and I kind of wish there was a romance element to this series. Realistically, it doesn't need it. It is very, very funny, very, very cute. The, the main character is so adorable. I love her. I would highly recommend Sleepy Princess in the Demon Castle. So I watched Sleepy Princess in the Demon Castle on Crunchyroll. It had just been moved over from Funimation um, and the thing with Sleepy Princess in the Demon Castle, because I was doing an assignment, I watched most of it in English and watched three or four episodes in Japanese. Honestly, the English dub is just 
fucking fantastic. Half of the lines sound improv and it works in the favor of the English dub. Like I watched the, like I read the subtitles um, for the <laughs> Japanese version and it didn't hit as hard as the English dub does in terms of comedy. So if you're going to watch this uh, series and you're an English speaker, watch the English dub. It is so fucking funny. It is fantastic. So I really love the series. I would highly, highly, highly recommend it. It is so fucking funny. And if you're an English speaker, I would highly recommend watching this in the English dub. It is genuinely really funny. Now, speaking on parody of the fantasy and like video game genre and the saving a princess from a tower genre we are going to talk about a anime that i had been interested in uh in my original 2022 upcoming anime video that being fantasy bishoujo juriku ojisan to or boring bitch turns into a total fantasy knockout featuring old but hot man who has issues with women and they're transported into a fantasy world. That's not the actual title but I am too lazy to remember what the English title is. This is definitely meant to be a parody of the genre but it takes, it t it takes itself a little too seriously towards the end of the series. That being said, I really wanted to like this series. Legitimately, the first couple of episodes were like pretty good. I was like, okay, I can see what this is. It's kind of funny. I'm laughing a little bit. I, I, I can continue the series, definitely. I stopped at episode four. The first couple of episodes were really decent, but it hit a wall hard with pacing and it just became really boring really fast like i watched the rest of the series today and watched is in a very big quotation marks so i watched from episode five onwards um because that's where i need to watch from i fell asleep after episode five when i woke up i woke up twice i woke up once during episode eight then proceeded to very quickly fall asleep again until I got to episode 11. This is the first time I've ever fallen asleep during an anime. The thing with this anime, I have absolutely no, no uh, intention of rewatching this anime. I personally didn't enjoy it after <laughs> episode four. Episode five was extremely boring. I got through halfway through episode six before falling asleep and I was just bored. I really wanted to like this series. It started off really well and some of the comedy was like solid. After that, I was just not having fun. I was just sort of watching it to be like, okay, I can watch this without abandoning the series. Falling asleep, I guess, counts as me watching it. I mean, it's playing while I'm unconscious and I wake up to it uh, at episode eight and then episode 11. So yeah, um, I personally don't like this series. I really wanted to. The concept is kind of funny. Genuinely, I think it started taking itself a little too seriously. It should have sort of continuously just made fun of itself personally, uh, cause it definitely gives off parody of the traveling into another world genre and if it wasn't that then I've clearly misinterpreted the meaning of the uh, anime and it's meant to just be a fantasy comedy um, if that is the case then it does his job as a fantasy comedy um, but when it gave the impression that it's parody you can kind of see where I'm coming from <laughs> right so yeah I I really wanted to like the series, but I just couldn't. It got very bore boring and mediocre very, very quickly. So yeah. Okay, so that is the, the I've taken off my glasses so that they do not 
caused glare because I'm almost certain my ring light has caused a reflection in them. Uh, that has been all from me today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will be making these either tri-monthly or bi-monthly depending on how much anime or how much manga I read. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys want to support me where I am able to get more manga, then I have a uh, Ko-Fi link down in the description down below. Mainly the purpose of that Ko-Fi is to fund cosplays and currently the cosplay that is there is this cursed Waluigi monstrosity. I actually have a plan for this cosplay other than just using it for videos. Uh, now I may wear it at PAX Australia if I get it <laughs> done by then. Granted PAX isn't until October so yeah time goal now yay. <laughs> But yes, uh, you don't have to donate to that. Do not feel obliged to donate to that. Watching, liking this video and subscribing is support enough. I hope you guys have a fantastic day, night, afternoon. Not gonna say weekend this time. Whatever time it is for you, I hope you ha have a lovely day or night or afternoon, as I just said. <laughs> if you could please like and subscribe, that will be very much appreciated and I will see you guys next time I upload every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Australian Eastern occasionally on Fridays and I hope to see you next time bye